everybody. Thank you for stopping by. I'd like to preface this video by saying it is not a tutorial, but a means to have something in the background while you work on your own project. If you're like me and really enjoy having something on while you work, sometimes the content you like is very visually engaging and you're several hours in and haven't gotten nearly as far along in your project as you would have liked to. So that's where I come in. If you're new here, welcome. And if you're returning, welcome back. It has been a million years since since we last um, were together like this. And unfortunately, we're still not in the same setup as before. Uh, if you remember from my last video, I showed you guys the room that I usually film in. And it is currently... Uh, in disarray because my partner is still shif uh, sifting through the stuff that they got during their childhood from their parents and um, we're just in a situation where I'm literally on my bed that my bed is not made I'm just under the covers and um, there really isn't a good place to film because this room has stuff all over it and um, my downstairs living room has boxes and things all over because my partner is going through this, this thing where they're experimenting with um, some gaming systems and trying to mod and I'm not using the right terminology, but they're trying to do some things with um, some of their Game Boys and stuff like that. So I'm hoping I'm in frame. But if not, this is more of an audio thing anyway than a visual, but I'm, I'm just knitting and I have the camera on what I'm working on. So if you're a regular and you're used to just seeing my beautiful face, uh, comment below if you prefer that kind of style. I, I hope to go back to it one day, soon, hopefully. But if you're new or returning and you like this format, let me know and I might you know, switch it up every now and then once things are officially settled the way they should be. But until then, we are going to be like this until further notice. I'm hoping before the end of the year, the boxes will be moved out of the way. And then I can set up my tripod in my filming room slash guest room slash craft room slash workout room that we have and and or um the the furniture that's currently in my bedroom will be moved and then i can have the the camera set in the upright position where you're looking directly at me but right now we're just gonna see my hands as i what is that i have some kind of mark right here and i don't know why uh we're gonna be knitting like this i am currently working on my uncle's sock for holiday, I decided to go with a bulky weight yarn. This is 100% acrylic. This is by Paintbox. I got it at lovecrafts.com only to make my shipping quota when I made my, um, actually the baby blanket that I made for my partner's friend uh, who happened to have like this purple colorway. This is a little piece of scrap I was using as a stitch marker because uh, you'll see soon I have another sock I'm working on and I was working on these downstairs and I just happened to have like a, only a couple stitch markers down there with me and didn't want to come up here and rearrange everything just to get to my my knitting notions. I've actually moved a lot of my knitting stuff into my bedroom because my partner really 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 wanted to make sure that there was space for whenever their childhood stuff arrived that they'd be able to put it up somewhere and so i'm like well we have a corner in the room honestly i just had some clothes drying racks set up in the corner because i do laundry every single weekend and just left them up all the time and never took them down uh, but I folded them up, put them in another corner, um, and then I'm like, well, this corner can just be for my craft stuff and my knitting stuff, and then, um, it's not, like, too junky, it's just nice and tucked in a way, and 
and then we could move some other things into the corner where I had my crates. So, um, all of that to say that I didn't want to come up here and move this, this giant bed frame headboard thing out of the way. My partner, um, asked the mattress I'm sitting on is the one that they wanted however um it's hot it's a regular mattress it's not a memory foam like the one that I bought for us so you heat up really fast and my partner has been sweaty and hasn't really enjoyed the mattress as much as they thought and I was thinking in my head ha see told you mine was better but uh I told them, I'm like, you got to decide if you want to keep the one you asked for or um, donate this one and keep the one that I bought several years ago when we first decided to upgrade our mattress from the, the one that we had from Walmart originally. So um, we have our mattress propped up see me pointing toward the window area this way and there's a box spring just propped up um, next to our closet over there and then in this corner we have the headboard propped up against my knitting stuff so it's kind of hard to get to that area so I've just been making do with what kind of scraps and notions and things I've had lying around but um, long story, just to say that I still have my first sock that I did for my uncle. This is the one I finished, um, two days ago, I want to say now. It's Sunday, by the way, Sunday afternoon. And, um, I just haven't wanted to rummage around to try to move things to get the needle that I need to weave in the ends here because the one I had downstairs is too thin it's more for sock weight and I need a bulky a big needle for this guy and so I've just left them on the DPNs until I'm ready to do that but you can see the finished sock here and this is still the same ball of yarn that I'm using for the second I have to knit until this foot part is eight inches long and then I can start my decrease round for the shaping of the toe so I have a ways to go but it goes pretty quickly because it is bulky weight and I'm so happy about that I'm using size 8 US needles with um, the 9 inch cord for my my fixed circulars so the ones the DPNs are size 8 as well these are pony brand DPNs. I love them because they have different colors and I love colorful things. Uh, they are plastic with like some kind of reinforced core so that they don't snap as easily. And I like them because they're, they're uh, a little, they're not as slick as metal but um, they're not as sticky as wood either I feel. Like, they're a little sticky, but they're kind of close to, like, varnished wood or polished wood if you had, like, knit picks or something like that. That's kind of how I feel like they feel like to me. Um, but yeah, so I'm just knitting around. Nothing fancy. Uh, just nice, easy knitting for today. Hoping to finish this sock today as well because I need to cast on for the socks for my aunt. I'm also working on the sock for my cousin's son. Um, I may have mentioned that recently, or at least I put it in the description of the last video I had so that you guys knew I didn't stop knitting, I just wasn't knitting on camera. And I'm hoping you guys can see this if you do want to watch me knitting around in a circle but uh, yes I'm feeling so you know well c considering the the million MAGA walk that happened um, I'm not too thrilled about that but as far as the 
prime results of the presidential election. Uh, Biden wasn't, you know, my first choice, but I'm, ha I think the, the goal for many of us, if you are a U.S. citizen and have voting rights and did participate in the 2020 election that happened, and you are of a, um, either center left or centralist in general, you may have felt inclined to vote for Biden, Kamala, because um, you just didn't want to have uh, President Trump uh, in for a second term. Now, if you are more on the uh, center right or right, and you're watching me, um, I am sorry <laughs> that you probably want to dislike this video, or maybe you're pretty tolerant of other views, and I appreciate that if you are, but I, as a person who, I'm more of a progressive, to be honest, and if that ruffles some feathers, that's just me. I try not to be too political, but it does affect my mental health and how I feel about things because it is a, such a big part of my life and it's a part of a lot of people's lives. So I think if, if whatever's going on in the world doesn't like vibrate into your spirit in some way, shape, or form, uh, you are living a life of luxury, I would say. But for those of us who any sort of policy change or restriction or just disregard for your right as a human, um, if it's affected in some way, then you feel that. And you feel that for people you know and love who are part of groups and communities and have identities that are also negatively impacted. And so that was really like something I'm like, I don't want to pretend to be happy if this isn't going to go the way that I really, really, really want it to go. Now, my ideal way was if, you know, Bernie Sanders had one, because as a millennial, a person who is in that millennial age group, a lot of things that he has spoken of um, and his policies were very beneficial to people like me and very beneficial to the people like me in the future. And if we're thinking ahead, um, that spoke to me. That really resonated with me both presidential terms. I voted, I, on, I will tell you, I voted for Bernie in the, um, in the primaries back for the 2016. And I voted for Bernie in the primaries for the 2020. And both times, he was not the winner. And, and again, it, a lot of his ideas didn't lean toward many people who were kind of in the middle, but the ones of us who were like left, I'm a left-handed person, I'm a left-handed uh, political thinker, um, just because of the human rights aspect of it. Um, I'm thinking, you know, if there was a Republican out there who was for helping people who needed help when they needed help, was for universal health care, was for uh, free college education or reduced costs or debt forgiveness for those of us who have had to take out loans because we could not afford to go to college just out of pocket. Um, you know, child care policies that would help families, working families, uh, social security for those of us who bust our butts for 20, 30 years can retire safely without having to be a greeter at Walmart to make ends meet. Um, you know, all of those things, um, providing amnesty for folks who are seeking refuge here and creating good jobs for people so we don't have to work three jobs and still barely make it, you know. Um, making sure the people who are at the top are paying 
their fair share of taxes that would then again help the folks who don't make enough to afford things and then maybe they would make enough because then with fair wages no one would struggle you know all of those good things but you know some people hear some rhetoric that doesn't support that in the long run and then they get scared and then they think somebody's trying to take from me no one's trying to take everyone's just trying to make things fair and equal and that doesn't mean you lose anything but it's a game anyway all of that just to say that I obviously took a couple weeks off because I'm like I don't know what's gonna happen and I don't want to film and think that everything is daisies and roses when inside I'm like crumbling <laughs> because I'm scared or I think everything is going to be okay and then turns out it's not and then I have all these videos of me pretending like my week has been okay and and looking back on that and I'm thinking how foolish I was and things could change and I could look back on this one that I'm posting on Monday and be like oh man I should have still stayed offline because now I'm like some things went really south and I don't feel good anymore but at this point taking a look at how things are going I'm you know it could still be better but it's not as horrible as I had thought it would be so I feel comfortable being here with you guys today and I'm glad that you guys are here and willing to watch and listen too and I'm, I'm so glad that you guys are with me so if you feel like I feel we can feel it together and if you don't then I applaud you for being able to trudge through without having those those thoughts and those worries because it does take a lot if you're a US person or if you're just involved in US politics at all or it affects you in some way whether you know it or not if it does affect you and you don't understand how it affects you then you're living a, a life of luxury for sure and privilege I think and now if you're not a US citizen or you don't live in the US well, no, if you are you if you're not a US citizen and you live in the US, it does affect you. If you don't live in the US is what I'm saying. Um, and it, you just live in a world where this isn't a big deal to you, then you're lucky. I'm sure whatever system you have in place is working for you if you don't have like a comparison, you know, like if there's something not going on where you live where you're like man I really wish it was this way or this way because I'm struggling right now um, if you don't have to say those things or feel those things then you tell me where you live because I might need to move I've already felt like I needed to move for a while but <laughs> how to do that is the question I know there are a lot of people who are thinking about being expats right now and have been for some time and are just trying to get the the research down and the funds together to be able to make um, a well uh, educated move to a place that would offer them um, a sense of peace and and lack of fear for their well-being and their life wherever they would move so i get that i get that um news other news so um in my past video video last week where i briefly showed you guys the chaos that was in the other room um since then um my state has enforced stricter uh policies on your your going about your day-to-day -day. so um you're basically essential business only don't go out if you don't have to go out and if you are aware in the United States Thanksgiving is um, next week next Thursday is Thanksgiving and I personally um, it's weird because like last year I was home by myself my partner 
ditched me. They went to visit their family in a, not a neighboring state, but in the Midwest. It was close enough that they could drive their reasonable amount of time and be with their aunt and uncle and cousin. And they didn't want to wait for me to finish my workday. I was off at 3 o'clock on the Wednesday. Wednesday is when we, um, we closed up shop early so people could travel to visit family. Back, back when traveling was a thing. Back before COVID. I mean, COVID was already a thing. But back before the U.S. like really hit that, that wave of, whoa, now it's serious. Um, so my partner went to visit relatives, stayed over the weekend, and they didn't want to wait for me to get out of work. So they're like, I'm going to go now, bye. And I'm like, fine, whatever. It's fine. I didn't really care all that much, but I would have really appreciated some free food. <laughs> um, but it's cool. So they left, and I was here. So I did my Why I'm Thankful video, and, you know, did my nails, I think, and I I think that's the day that I did my nails and talked about being thankful for things. And I, as a person who has, I mean, if you think of what, how did Thanksgiving come to be, the, the origin of it isn't good, but the aftermath, if you think of how to turn it into a positive, is to, even though you should be thinking of what you're thankful for every day, um, it's a moment to pause and be with family and to be thankful for what you have and where you've come from and how far you've come and all of the good things that are in your life that you can think about. It's a day for reflection, I guess. So because I'm not a big person on that day, it's not like my favorite holiday. It's not really something that I truly celebrate, but I do recognize. Um... I have to buy food this time because I can't go to visit anyone. My work usually has an event, but um, because of COVID, they're not doing it because that means people gathering in a small space and sharing food and sitting and getting seconds and all that stuff. So they're like, nope, that was already a given. Like, they're not doing it this year. They didn't even have to tell us. Like, we already know. Um, so I can't rely on that for food. So I have to get food. And that means I, I can't rely on um, Instacart because they have messed up too many times for me to trust them with how expensive Thanksgiving food is. Now, the individual items are not expensive, but when you're making everything from scratch, every single ingredient has to be accounted for and that adds up because I asked my partner I said what one two three three what three things do you want to eat for Thanksgiving and then they said turkey stuffing mashed potatoes rolls sweet uh candied yams or candied sweet potatoes depending on what you buy um uh mashed potatoes did I say that already and, um, yeah, so turkey, stuffing, or dressing, depending on who you're talking to, mashed potatoes, rolls, macaroni, yeah, that's six. That's three more things than what I said. And then they said gravy, but I count that as more of like a condiment than an actual item, because you kind of drizzle it on everything. And I'm like, that's, that's not, that's not what I asked you. And you're like, that's what I want. And I'm like, you're, that's all starch besides the turkey. Um, you're like, yeah. I'm like, all right. So I'm per pretty much like not into that. I mean, I like macaroni. Turkey's okay. It's not my favorite, but uh, yeah, whatever. So now I'm like, we need to go to the store in person. Because I need to make sure we get a baby turkey. Because just the two of us, there's no reason I need a giant turkey. Um, I need to make sure that the bread is at a good expiration date. So it will be, I mean, the loaf of bread. I have to buy a loaf of bread to make the, the dressing. 
and you know make sure the celery for the the dressing is looking good and make sure that the yams are yams if and then if i can't find yams sweet potatoes are fine and um you know all that stuff and usually if i have an instacart order for a big order they either i don't know if they're lying because you know i'm not there i can't shop i don't know what they're looking at and like let's say two weeks ago now it was my partner's birthday my birth my partner's birthday fell within that week of election week and um i had ordered from instacart several things they they wanted um one of their favorite things that i've made for them before which is steak with um a seafood alfredo topping so I asked for shrimp and scallops and crab to be um, purchased and I chose a store that usually has a lot of those things and very nice quality and the person went in and like I kept getting alerts like not 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 on the shelf or like out of stock out of stock out of stock out of stock and so I I you know, paid this tip already because I figured, you know, however much the purchase would be and here's the money and and they literally just came to my doorstep with like three things and I had like maybe 12 things ordered and I'm like, what? So they went in so quick. I feel like they just wanted to say that they got the tip, bought the things that or picked the things that were easiest to grab and then said that everything else was gone. Um, and I didn't ask for replacements because it's like there wasn't any alternative to these items. Like I needed this crab or nothing. Um, and so I was really disappointed in that. And it's happened before where there's the things that are just strangely not found. Um, I also noticed like it's not malicious, I don't think, of them, but, you know, you buy stuff and they'll put raw food, like raw meat next to things that can't be cooked, like grapes, and, and, and that doesn't make any sense, or, you know, a box of crackers, and you're like, you can't put raw f meat next to things that need to be prepared, that can't be prepared. Um, so that's weird and i've told my partner this several times my partner's the one with the car so i'm like hey you know if we keep doing this home delivery stuff we're gonna keep running into these problems because the people are just filling as many orders as they can because their their time is based on hour or you know if you think of how much time you spend on each order and how little pay you get per order it's more efficient to do a lot of orders in one go so you actually get more money for your hours spent you know working so they try to go really really fast and sometimes they grab the wrong thing like the time when i asked for frosting and they gave me frozen ice cream not the same thing um totally useless and um sometimes things will be out of stock perhaps and I provide an alternative option and then they put something else in the cart and I'm like that's not what I said the replacement should be so you have problems like that and I've okay, I've talked about this on my channel before because it's just like man but you pay for the service if you pay and you expect top quality that seems fair like that's their job but you also understand that this labor force isn't like professional they are gig work so they're not getting all the benefits and and perks of being a fully established employee so you you kind of understand when people get disgruntled or discouraged and start to kind of slack off but at the same time it's like you're paying a lot of money to have it so why but then again if you don't like it why do you pay for it and it is really just convenience and it's safety and it's time and 
for the most part, it's okay. There are some people who really do well, and but then you've got a whole bunch that are just like, it's just something, the, the company eats the cost of the mistakes. What is it to you? So, you know, they don't care as much. Um, but I think if you're reviewing the people and you give them bad reviews, then that does affect like their service level or maybe how many jobs they get. So, I don't know. It's crazy. But all of that to say that we, my partner and I, because my partner's the one who wants this extravagant meal, um, we have to go in person because I'm not going to spend money on the service when I know their track record. And this is like a super, super expensive one-time only kind of purchase where like if they show up with... Um, you know, a 20 pound turkey, when I ask for like a 10 pound turkey, we're going to have a problem. Cause one, I don't even have a pan big enough for a 20 pound turkey. And two, that is absolutely not what I wanted and not what I asked for in my cart. And then they're like, well, if you're getting your tip based on the percentage of the order, if I buy the more expensive thing, then that's more money on my tip, which is something that I've caught on to where I've asked for replacements and maybe that's just me thinking into it too hard, but like I've asked for replacements that were cheaper than the thing that I wanted, only based on the alternative available. Well, um, <laughs> the the camera did cut off. I thought that I had some time left, but I didn't. Um, but all of that rant actually was very close to the very end of my rant anyway, so I'm very glad about that. And I just wanted to say that I haven't knit too much further, but we are, we're making our way through, making our way downtown, you know, good old Michelle Ranch. Anyway, um, yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and call this a video, um, but overall I was just saying that my partner and I are gonna have to go in person to the grocery store to make sure that we get exactly what is on the list no weird replacements, no wrong items, actually like what we picked, good quality, and not have to deal with the hassle of the home delivery lack of reliability. But the timing is horrible. When is it ever a good time to have a pandemic? Honestly, never. But the fact that my state has made these restrictions and, you know, essential business only, grocery store being one of them, uh, the fact that we are going to have an extended lockdown, well, not 100% lockdown, but scaled back um, public activities, uh, there are predictions of stores having shortages of items because people might panic buy again. Thank goodness. Um, we went to Target uh, last week, week before, and got another uh, case of toilet paper because we literally only had two rolls left of our previous case. So we only buy toilet paper when we're down to like our last two or three rolls. We don't buy any more than what we need. We just buy one case at a time. Um, but we just bought a new case, so we should be good for a while. Um, <laughs> you know, in case we run out again and need to go buy more and there isn't any on the shelf. Um, but... Grocery-wise, uh, if there isn't anything on the shelf, then my partner's just going to have to deal with uh, not having the Thanksgiving dinner that they hoped and dreamed of, and I'm fine with that because that means I don't have to cook it. But, um, yeah, we're, we're just going to have to go in person, though everything's kind of like scaled back as far as what you can do and where you can do it and how long you can do it for. Uh, so the fact that we have to go into the store when there is a spike um, and restrictions means that we are risking our exposure <sighs> more because it's a long list of stuff I have to get. So I'm hoping I can split the list in half and say, you go down these aisles and get this, I'll go down these aisles and get that, knock it out really fast, um, try to go like right before they close or right when they open so that we can get everything we need without the midday crowds 
and um, just hope for the best as far as actually having the things on the shelf because people aren't stockpiling like they were at the very beginning. So we'll see. Um, but I will see you guys on Wednesday with another video. Maybe It's probably going to be this one because I really want to get this one done this weekend um, considering it's Sunday and it's Sunday afternoon. So we'll see you then. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see ya. Bye.